Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Tuesday, which means it's time for our weekly tier list Tuesday. And recently there's been a lot of talk about U23 players. I reacted to the athletics list like a week or two ago at this point. It was a very interesting list that combined all the 2020 to 2024 guys. Carter Yakubchuk was 10th. Lane Hudson was like 87th. So I am going to be doing a U23 players list, but only the guys that are expected to play at the NHL level. And I also threw in Ivan Dimitrov for shits and gigs because I think it's stupid to compare like a 2024 draftee unless it's like Celebrini or Dimitrov to like 2020 guys that have two NHL seasons under their belt. So this is just guys that are going to be playing in the NHL next season and prominent guys. I don't have every single player from the 2020 2021 draft that have been serious NHLers, but these are in my opinion some of the top guys. I'm probably forgetting a couple guys that are maybe better than some other guys and this is looking at kind of more so their futures, not just how good they are right now because obviously there's not a ton of, there's no super stars there's no true franchise talents outside of Connor Bedard right now but these guys are going to con continue to develop so let's get started oh, let me just break down this first superstar that's a legit top 10 consistent top 10 player not just a one-off top 10 season throughout their prime franchise is like top 25 elite more so like top 50 top 60 very good means very good top pair slash line and then we just got good so let's get into it up first we got Jimmy Stew and I'm going to put Jimmy Stew in franchise guys not sure he's going to be a consistent top 10 guy in the entire nhl but i think based on what he did in the 2023 season he's definitely trending more so to be a franchise level guy logan stan coven this might be controversial. I'm not sure how high his ceiling is compared to some of the other guys that we're going to look at, but I think he's going to be a solid 75, 80 point first liner when it's all said and done. Yes, he is small, but he's not afraid to get into the absolute greasy areas. Brant Clark, though, I'm decently high on... Uh, I'm going to put Brant Clark in elite as of right now. You look at what this guy has done at the AHL level. The last year was just insane. He led all AHL defensemen in points per game. I think once he hits, he's really going to hit for the LA Kings and eventually uh, succeed Drew Doughty as their legit number one defenseman. Uri Slavkovsky, between elite and franchise for me, I think I'm going to go with franchise, considering what this guy did at 19 years old. Mason McTavish, very good. It's clear that Leo Carlson's probably going to be the franchise center for the Anaheim Ducks. We're going to get to him eventually. But McTavish is going to be one of the best second-line centers in the entire NHL and probably would be a first-line center on a lot of teams once he really hits his prime. Connor Bedard, easy superstar, started him off in superstar after his rookie year. No shit there. Jake Sanderson, I... Mm, I He's going to be borderline like top seven, top six defenseman in the NHL. It's going to be tough because he's going to be his prime's going to hit and he's going to have other guys like Kale McCarr, Fox, Hughes, Heiskanen, Darlene still really cooking in their primes. So right now I'm going to go with elite, but I think he's going to be a top seven to 14 defenseman in the NHL. Matty Beniers, it's tough after a bit of a down year. I still think he's going to be a very good player. I still think he's going to be a 70-ish point two-way beast. Maybe not elite, maybe not top 12, top 15 center like we expected after his rookie year, but I still really like the contract that they signed him to. I think he's going to be a good player. Pavel Michikov, I think that he's going to be elite based on rookie year that this guy had. He's trending to be the Ducks franchise defenseman and a damn good one at that. Adam Fantilli, Although he had his injury, his, his season cut short by injury, he was chugging along at around like 50 point per game pace, point per game, 50 point pace on the season. So I still see no reason why this guy can't be a 90 plus point two way solid franchise center for the Columbus Blue Jackets that not even they'll mess up. Uh, Dylan Gunther, I'm going to go with very good based on the fact that this guy was chugging at around 32 goal, 34 assist pace last season. I think him and Luke, Logan Cooley are going to be a very underrated duo for the next decade or so with the Utah Hockey club will smith i'm gonna go with elite i'm not sure he's I, it's gonna be interesting to see he definitely can move up if he has a very good rookie year right now elite he's clearly not gonna be the franchise center of the uh, san jose sharks no shit there i think that he is gonna be very good but it's gonna be interesting to see that uh celebrini though i think celebrini is a franchise level center when looking at the numbers that he put up at 17 years old at the college level this guy really doesn't have any weaknesses with this game he just does everything at a very high level so as a result I think he definitely has superstar potential not quite Bedard level I'm not trying to say that but I would take him right now definitely over these three David Yurchek I was very high on him in his draft year I'm still I might actually bump him down a little bit when looking at it. He was he's been pretty disappointing last year at the NHL level. Uh, Brock Faber, Brock Faber, I think he's more proven than these two guys, but he is older than these two guys. I think Brock Faber is going to be a very good top 
11 to 17 defenseman in the NHL. I'm not sure he's going to be quite a top 10 guy, even though he did have such a good rookie year. I, I'm going to put him in very good as of right now, but I definitely could move him up. Lucas Raymond, 72 points at 21 years old. Probably only going to get better from here. Probably going to get to point per game and maybe even 90 points. Cole Perfetti, if they actually play him in Winnipeg, he could probably end up in very good. But right now I'm going to go with good. Zach Benson, I am very high on Zach Benson when looking at what this guy did at 18 years old this season, 30 points in 71 games. William Eklund, I want to put in the elite, but I don't think he's quite on the level of those six guys right now. He's probably more so of a Stan Coven or Dylan Gunther, but I think he is one of the most underrated U23 or U22 players in the entire NHL at this point. 45 points on a dog shit team. Wyatt Johnson, I think, is around the franchise player. Dallas has like two other franchise players, so that definitely would be interesting. But once he fully emerges and takes over as their number one center, probably over Rupe Hints, it's going to be special. Quinton Byfield, I think elite based on the physical tools of this guy. He finally really put him together this season with a 55-point season, 55 point season, and he could potentially end up being a legit franchise player. Matt Faye Mitchkov, superstar man, based on what this guy's done at the KHL level. Cutter Gauthier, uh... I'm going to go with the lead. I'm going to go with the lead. I think his shot is just so special, and I think he's going to be sniffing 40 goals once he hits his prime, especially if he's playing with a Leo Carlson, playing with a Mason McTavish. He's going to have very good passers to play with. Uh, Owen Power, very good. Bit of a down bit of a down sophomore season. It's going to be tough because they have Rasmus Dahlin on that left side as well, but I think he's still going to develop into a very solid around 45 to 55-point guy, even being on that second pair with uh, Darlene there. I had to move some things around, but we got Logan Cooley up next. And I think Logan Cooley is trending to be an elite goddamn player in the NHL. I, I think I might move Logan Cooley up the franchise. Actually, I'm still pretty high on Logan Cooley. When you look at him, 44 points at only 19, 20 years old this season. He's an absolute wizard with the puck on his stick, and he's NHL proven at this point. I think that he's going to end up being around the 90-point number one center for the Utah Hockey Club with Dylan Gunther. Marco Rossi, good pair top line. Not sure when he's going to take over as the top line with a guy like Joel Eriksson, but I think he has around 60 to 70 point potential when it's all said and done. Leo Carlson, franchise guy around 50 point pace. And when you look at it, his underlying numbers were very solid. He was in like the top 20% both offensively and defensively at even strength. His teammates just didn't really do a good job finishing the chances that he gave them. He's turning into a legit 90 to 100 point franchise. Two-way guy, Seth Jarvis. He's an elite category. You could maybe make an argument for franchise considering what he did at 22 years old or 21 years old this season with 33 goals, 34 assists, 67 points. Lane Hudson. I might get killed if I don't put him in elite. Do I think that he's in that elite territory? I'm going to put him in very good. I think he's going to be a very, very good top pair offense defenseman. Will he be an elite top 10 defenseman in his prime? Like I think Brant Clark or Pavel Minchikov are capable of. I'm a little bit lower though. I'm a little bit lower. Shane Wright. Shane Wright gets good, good, good top pair or line. I think he's going to be more so of a second line center because they have Matty Beniers, but he's going to be good. JJ Paterka kind of gets the same. I could see you moving up JJ. Actually, I might move JJ Paterka up. He was very good this season for the Buffalo Sabres. Kevin Korchinski, I think, is going to be a very good offensive defenseman. Him and Artem Leshinov has have the potential to be one of the best defensive pairs in like three to four years with Korchinski's great offensive game. Uh, Leshinov's more so balanced two-way game. Simone Nemich, I think he's kind of a franchise defenseman. I'm not going to lie. I think Simone Nemich is going to be an absolute star. And then Luke Hughes, we got an elite after 47 points at 20 years old this season. He's a very special talent. And lastly, Ivan Demidov goes in franchise. I, I know I, I might be disrespecting Lane Hudson a little bit, Canadians fans, but I'm going to give Ivan Demidov the love, especially based on how good he was at the MHL and every clip that I see him at the KHL. Looks like he's developing very well. But here's the full tier list. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Who would you move up? Who would you move down? Who am I disrespecting? Lane Hudson's the greatest thing since sliced bread. If you saw the tweet on, uh, it was some beat reporter said, if you've never seen Barry Sanders play uh, football, Lane Hudson playing hockey is the same. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? I'll be seeing you in the next one. But wait, there's more. You thought I was done. Of course, I was just trolling. We still have Lafreniere. He goes in elite. I think that he, the way that he played this most recent season, I think he is, in fact, going to not live up to full expectations, but I think he's going to turn into around a 75 to 85 point guy after such a good season.